Part 1 You and a friend are looking for a place to live. You have a list of places and go to see a rental agent to check on a number of points. Listen to the conversation between your friend and the rental agent and complete the list. First, you have some time to look at questions 1 to 7. Listen carefully and answer questions 1 to 6. Hi, we've been looking over your listing of apartments for rent and we have a few questions about a couple of the apartments. Can you help us? Sure. Yep, yeah, this is our most recent listing. What would you like to know? Well, we were first wondering about the house on 3rd Street. We can see that it is furnished and rents for $135 a week, but can you tell us how many bedrooms it has? Let's see. In addition to the den, it has three bedrooms. What about the one on Route 9N? It looks like it's big with a library and a deck, but it doesn't say how much it costs or anything else about it. Oh yes, Mrs Gaylor's apartment. That one is actually only a 10-month rental and it is going for $156 per week. It's quite a nice place. She only rents for 10 months each year because of horse racing season. Then her relatives all come to stay, so tenants have to move out. It's a little bit inconvenient, but past tenants have really enjoyed their stay there. Oh, well, we need it for a full year. I guess that one is out. How about the rental on Broen Drive? How many rooms does that one have? As it says on the list, it has two bedrooms and a private kitchen and bath. But it's actually a very small place. That's why it's a bit cheaper. Oh. Well then, what about the one that has three large rooms? Who is renting that property? That one is a good deal. Mr John Smith is renting it. But he's quite eccentric and he has a strict rule about no pets. How about cats? Nope. Absolutely no pets. Hmm. Well then, how about this studio apartment rented by Mr Bo Jensen? How is that one? That ad is actually a bit deceptive. The studio apartment is the whole upper floor of an older house. It's actually very large and, at $45 a week, quite affordable. And it's near campus. I think I'd like to check that one out. Do you have a telephone number that we can call? It's not on the list. Oh, it isn't. Here it is. You should ring area code 518 and then 543-7790. Thanks. I think I'll call on that one first. Your friend decides that he would like to talk to Mr. Bo Jensen. Before you hear the rest of the talk, you have some time to look at questions 8 to 10. Now listen and answer questions 8 to 10. Hello? 1512, Route 9. Yes. Is this Mr Jensen? Yes, it is. Can I help you? Yeah. We're studying here at university and we came across the rental information for the studio apartment that you are renting. Is it still available? Yes, of course. I actually just placed the ad and you're the first person to call. Is there anything you'd like to know about it? Yes, actually, there is. As students, we are on the internet a lot, and we heard that some homes in the area have high-speed connections. What type of connection do you have there now? Oh, <laughs> that's an interesting first question. But I guess I have heard that too. But we just have a phone line here. Nothing fancy. 
I think you can have a cable line installed, but it's just a phone line for now. Okay. Well, maybe we can do that. What type of heating does the apartment have? Now there's a more traditional question. We have oil heat here. It's an older house. That tends to be a little more expensive during the winter, right? Yeah, but there's nothing to do about it. It would cost too much for me to put in a gas heater. What else would you like to know about the apartment? Well, we heard it was quite big. Is it furnished? Actually, yes. I should have put that in the ad. It has an old couch and a couple chairs, a dining table, refrigerator, stove, and even a dishwasher. Does it have any beds? Yep, it has two. That sounds great. When is the apartment available? You can have it tomorrow night if you want. I just have to clean up a couple things before you get here. Do you want to come over and see it first? No, it sounds fine to us. I actually know the street too, so I know the area. We'll take it. That is the end of part one. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turns to part two. Part two. You are going to hear the director of the leadership council give his welcome address at a convention. First, you have some time to look at questions eleven to fifteen. Now, listen carefully and answer questions 11 to 15. Ladies and gentlemen, can I have your attention, please? Please find your seats. Snacks will be available all day long. Thank you. Allow me to first introduce myself. I am Joe Steinke, Director of the Leadership Council. On behalf of the Organizing Committee for the 8th Annual Leadership Conference, I welcome you all to San Dimas, California, for a special session on postmodern solutions. We have people attending from as far away as Toronto, New York, and even the Bahamas. Frankly, I wish we had gone to you there. <laughs> but we're very glad you're all here. Let me say further that this will be our largest conference yet. Registrations have far surpassed our expectations. For the first three days, we will be hosting more than 325 participants for lectures and workshops. Another 100 will be joining us for our final two days and culminating session on Friday evening. We also have a larger selection of seminars than ever, a total of 32. Because we know that you all will want to attend a few special sessions, we will repeat key seminars each day. So there will actually be 38 sessions. I'm sure you will all be pleased with the content and the quality of speakers. Before you hear the rest of the talk, you have some time to look at questions 16 to 20. Now listen and answer questions 16 to 20. Now, for those who have opted not to take part in our bag lunches, there are a number of places nearby that we can recommend. We are located here in the convention center just across the street from the Harford Shopping Mall, and the place we most recommend is Vital's, 
which is just west across Queen Street on the opposite corner. Please be careful crossing both streets, however, as we don't want to lose any participants. <laughs> if you're not up to Vital's, you can also get some Italian food at the Olive Garden, which is further down Queen Street and east on Danning Avenue, across from the police station. They have a great minestrone soup and excellent breadsticks, all you can eat. On the other hand, if you want some good old American food, you can head to Fuddruckers for some big hamburgers or to the Cattle Company for some fat, juicy steak. Fuddruckers is next to the Olive Garden, but the Cattle Company is back closer to us in the opposite direction of Vital's. Just go east out of the convention center across King Street. It's on the same side as the convention center, so you just have one street to cross. Enjoy. But also, please make sure you are back for the afternoon sessions. These will always start at 1.30 p.m. That will give you an hour and a half for lunch each day. Sessions will be over each day at 5.30. Now, regarding the schedules we've printed out, there have been a couple of last-minute changes. The session titled New Leadership Strategies will no longer be held in Seminar Room 1, but in the main ballroom. This session has garnered much praise and is highly recommended to all, hence the change to a larger room. Another session has been canceled. That session was titled Leading by Serving, and it was scheduled for Daniel's room. The speaker for that session, Dr. Mark Green, had to return home for some urgent health situation. We wish the best to Dr. Green and that all is fine with his family. Finally, the session titled Using the Arts and Media has been changed to the second lounge room, Lounge 2. Please show up promptly for sessions and sit towards the front of each room so that all seats can be utilized. Also, turn off all pagers, beepers, and cell phones. Drinks and snacks will be provided outside each room, but please be careful at your tables. Enjoy the conference. That is the end of part two. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turns to part three. Part three. Now turns to part three. Part three. You will hear Peter Walsh being interviewed for a job. Listen and choose the correct answer for each question. First, you have some time to look at questions 21 to 25. Now, listen carefully and answer questions 21 to 25. Joanne! Hi, you must be Rob. Nice to meet you. So, I hear you're planning to visit Australia. Yeah, and I really wanted to talk to you because I was thinking of spending some time in Darwin, and my sister told me you're from there. That's right. So, tell me about it. Well... Where shall I start? Well, Darwin's in what they call the top end, because it's right up at the northern end of Australia, and it's quite different from the rest of Australia in terms of cultural influences. In fact, it's nearer to Jakarta in Indonesia than it is to Sydney, so you get a very strong Asian influence there. That means we get lots of tourists, 
People from other parts of Australia are attracted by this sort of international cosmopolitan image. And as well as that, we've got the same laid-back atmosphere you get all over Australia. Probably more so, if anything, because of the climate. But what a lot of the tourists don't realize until they get there is that the city's also got a very young population. The average age is just 29, and this makes the whole place very buzzy. Some people think that there might not be that much going on as far as art, music, dancing, and so on are concerned, because it's so remote. I mean, we don't really get things like theater and opera in the same way as cities down in the south, like Sydney, for example, because of the transport expenses. But in fact, what happens is that we just do it ourselves. Lots of people play music, classical as well as pop, and there are things like artist groups and writers groups and dance classes. Everyone does something. We don't just sit and watch other people. You said it's very international. Yeah. They say there are over 70 different nationalities in Darwin. For instance, there's been a Chinese population there for over 100 years. We've even got a Chinese temple. It was built way back in 1887, but mm, when a very bad storm, uh, a cyclone in fact, hit Darwin in the 1970s, it was almost completely destroyed. The only parts of the temple that survived were part of the altars and the stone lions, but after the storm, they reconstructed it using modern materials. It's still used as a religious center today but it's open to tourists, too, and it's definitely worth going to see it. Oh, and as far as getting around goes, you'll see the places that advertise bicycles for hire. But I wouldn't recommend it. A lot of the year, it's just so hot and humid. Some tourists think it'll be fine because there's not much in the way of hills and the traffic's quite light compared with some places, but believe me, you're better off with public transport. It's fine, and not expensive. Or you can hire a car, but it's not really worth it. What's the swimming like? Well, there are some good beaches, but the trouble is that there's this nasty creature called the box jellyfish, and if it stings you, you're in bad trouble. So you have to be very careful most of the year, especially in the winter months. You can wear a lycra suit to cover your arms and legs, but I wouldn't like to risk it even so, personally. And there are the saltwater crocodiles, too. I mean, I don't want to put you off. There are protected swimming areas netted off where you'll be safe from jellyfish and crocs, or there are the public swimming pools. They're fine, of course. Before you hear the rest of the talk, you have some time to look at questions 26 to 30. Now listen and answer questions 26 to 30. And answer the questions. Please sit down, Mr. Walsh. My name's Jane Swain, and I'm the personnel manager. Hello, how do you do? Now, this is just a short preliminary interview. I'd like to chat about your present job and what you've done up till now. Yes, of course. Well, could you tell me how long you've had your present position in Weston's? It is Weston's, isn't it? Yes, that's right. Um, I am not sure. Let's see. I left university in 2005. Is that right? Yes, 2005. Then I was unemployed for about three months. And then I traveled around America for a few months. So, yes, it must be about three years now, in fact. Hmm, yes. And have you any particular reason for wanting to change jobs? I mean, why do you want to move? Well, I actually like my present job and still find it interesting and stimulating. The salary's okay, so it's nothing to do with money, though you can always do with more. I suppose the thing is that I'm really very ambitious and keen to get promoted 
So that's the real reason. You say you like your job. Can you tell me what aspect you like most? Oh, my dear, that's difficult. There are so many things. The other people are great. There's a good cooperative atmosphere. I mean, among the staff, and compared to other companies, the conditions are great. I mean, the office itself and the working conditions. Hmm. And then there's the fact that they give me lots of room for initiative and let me make decisions. You know, that's what I really like most about the job. Yes, well, we're looking for someone like that. You know, someone who isn't a clock watcher and who isn't too concerned about working fairly long hours. Oh, I don't mind that. I'm used to it. And what about your education? You went to Manchester University, didn't you?、Uh, yes. After leaving school, I started a diploma course in design, but I decided to give it up and did an arts degree at university instead. Good. And have you done any courses since? That is the end of part three. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turns to part four. Part four. You'll hear a teacher talking about several British art galleries. First, you have some time to look at questions thirty-one to thirty-three. Now listen carefully and answer questions thirty-one to thirty-three. Good afternoon. Welcome to the first class of V one hundred Art and History. The objectives of the course, as you will have seen if you've taken a look at the syllabus, include familiarizing yourselves with the vocabulary and language of art. Learning about the basic elements of art and design, and finally discussing historical periods as they pertain to art. The course will also give you the opportunity to visit some of the many galleries and museums that Britain has to offer. So, having said that, I'd like to spend the rest of today's class talking about four of the more important galleries that we will be visiting in the coming year. As most of you already know, or at least I hope most of you know, there are four Tate galleries in all. To begin, I'd like to tell you a little bit about the Tate Modern. Tate Modern is located in a very busy part of London called the South Bank. It's close to two world-renowned tourist attractions: St Paul's Cathedral and Shakespeare's Globe Theatre. Now, interestingly enough, Tate Modern is housed in what was a power station, built in several stages between 1947 and 1963. It was closed down in 1981 and reopened as a gallery in the year 2000. Tate Modern consists of five levels, with the Tate Collection being shown on the third and fifth levels. On level two, the works of contemporary artists are exhibited, while level four is used for holding large temporary exhibitions. Since this museum opened, it has become a popular spot for both Londoners and tourists alike. And believe it or not, it doesn't cost anything to get in to see the collection displays. Before you hear the rest of the talk. You have some time to look at questions thirty-four to forty.
Now listen and answer questions 34 to 40. Now, the second gallery I'd like to talk about is Tate St. Ives, which is in Cornwall. It was built on the site of a gas works, and it overlooks Porthmeor Beach. Tate St. Ives is housed in a three-story building that was designed by the architects Evans and Shalliff. It was established in 1993, seven years before Tate Modern was opened, and the gallery exhibits the works of modern British artists, including members of the St. Ives School, a group of artists living and working in the area from the 30s onwards. In later lectures, we'll be looking at the work of some of the artists who belong to that group and the ways in which they influenced each other. Okay, am I going too fast for any of you? No? Good. Next, I want to talk about Tate Britain which is a gorgeous gallery situated right in the heart of Westminster. Tate Britain was the first of the four Tate galleries to open, and it was established in 1897. It was built on the site of an old prison, and when it first opened its doors, it was called the National Gallery of British Art. Later, it became known as the Tate Gallery, after the man who founded it, Sir Henry Tate. During its lifetime, Tate Britain has been damaged twice, once by floodwaters from the River Thames and once by bombings during World War II. This gallery has an interesting range of exhibitions of historic and modern art from 1500 up to the present day. Now, the last gallery I'd like to tell you about is called Tate Liverpool. It's not hard to figure out where this gallery is located, is it? It was opened in 1988 to exhibit displays from the Tate Collection, and it also has a program of temporary exhibitions. Tate Liverpool is housed in what was once a warehouse, and for some years it was one of the biggest galleries of modern and contemporary art in the UK. Well, that's a brief overview of just a few of the galleries we'll be visiting. I'd like now to look in a little more detail at what you can expect to see in each of these galleries, starting with Tate Britain. That is the end of part four. You now have half a minute to check your answers. But if I lay down and I play dead and I stay dead, maybe you'll get sick of being the monster out of my head, under my bed, think you're something out of my nightmares, sitting right there. But if I lay down and I play dead and I stay dead, then will you get bored of killing me? Silhouettes of you are like a taunt. Never really noticed what you want. 8 plus pen vocabulary for writing and speaking. First word is on account of. This is a phrase actually. On account of means because of. And you can use it. Although people deserve reward and recognition for acquired qualities, no one should be in a position to receive honors and benefits on account of birth. Nice sentence. Next word is the perils. Perils mean dangers. And you can use it ironically enough. The perils the modern world faces such as traffic jam, air pollution and accidents are closely associated with increase of vehicles. Next word is stimulate. Stimulate means encourage and you can use it. One way to stimulate public transport is to make private cars more expensive by imposing heavy taxes. Nice. Next word is abandon. Abandon means leave and you can use it. Faced with high cost and no parking space, People would perhaps be willing to abandon cars in favor of public transport. Nice. And next phrase is number of. A number of means many or several. And you can use it. The construction of free car parts and suburban train stations has proved successful in a number of countries. This is the end of the video, but don't forget to subscribe our channel. Thank you. I know you told your friend you're not okay. 
tell me what's wrong and why you never said you felt that way Cause you're trying to stay sh- First, you have some time to read questions 1 to 3. Now listen to the conversation and answer questions 1 to 3. Hi, sit down please. How can I help you? Thank you. I'm a student in the sociology faculty. I'm coming to ask for some information about renting a room in the college or near the campus. My name is Sarah. Yes, Sarah. How long have you been here in Sydney? You are not new, I suppose. No, I'm in my second year. I came to Sydney 18 months ago from Korea. Where are you living now? I live with my aunt in my cousin's room. It's pretty nice to live with my relatives, but unfortunately my cousin has finished his term and is returning from Britain next week. I have to rent a room for myself. Mm, yes, it sounds a little unfortunate, but I suppose it's a good chance for you to have a deeper understanding to real world. I hope so. Well, what sort of thing are you looking for? Uh, what we provide ranges from shared flat to homestay. And of course we have houses with gardens if you like. No, the house with a garden is obviously out of my price range. Shared flat is not bad, but I prefer a homestay. I enjoy the feeling of living with the family. When do you plan to begin the rent? Next week, you just said? No, my cousin is arriving by next week, so I hope to move out by this weekend. This weekend, okay. The main area we deal with is around the university. Around the university, aha. Uh -huh. Do you have anything near the northern gate of the university? You know, the sociology faculty is near the northern gate. Before you hear the rest of the conversation, you have some time to look at questions 4 to 10. Now listen to the conversation and answer questions 4 to 10. Yes, uh, what sort of price are you thinking of? Well, could you give me some idea? You know, I have no experience of renting a room. I don't know what price is reasonable, but I hope it's not over $300. I see. Usually the homestay ranges from $180 per month. Only $180? Yes, to $350, depending on a number of different factors. What does it depend on? Well, obviously, the quality of the house, the facilities, and extra services. Oh, I don't care about the quality very much, as long as it's clean. As to the facilities, I want the room with the separate bathroom. Kitchen isn't a necessity, because I don't want to cook by myself. I hope to have meals with the family, if possible. Okay, let me check the files. Mm, yes, I think this one might suit you. It's a family house with two vacant bedrooms. How about the owner of the house? I mean, is it a family, or...? Uh, according to the file, it is a retired lady. She wants to find college students as tenants. That's great! What's the condition of the rooms? The bigger bedroom is furnished and with a bathroom, and the rent is $320 per month. The smaller one charges $250. It is furnished too, but without bathroom. Oh, $320. It's a bit out of my range, but I think I prefer the bigger one. How about the meals? Well, the rent includes breakfasts and suppers. No lunches, however. You have to buy your lunch. That's no problem. I usually have my lunch in the college cafeteria. And that doesn't cover the water bill and electricity fee, but the laundry is included. Fine. Could you tell me the address? Yes, it's on 323 West Park Road. Let me get that down. 323. Okay, it's near the university. So, when can I have a look at the room? You know, I'm a little pressed for time. 
The file says the landlady is in every afternoon. So this week, say, Friday? Oh, I'm afraid I can't make it then. I have a lecture on Friday afternoon till 5.30. How about Thursday? OK, that's fine. Would five be OK? Yes, fine. Just come here. Yes, here in the student service office. Oh, before I forget, before moving, you have to pay one month's rent in advance. Really? Oh, I didn't know that before. Could I ask why? As the deposit. You know, in case you damage the property or move out without giving notice. Usually this doesn't happen, but standing in the owner's shoes... Yes, I understand it all. So that's $320. OK, I'll take the money. If I'm satisfied... Well, a word of advice. Don't forget to get a receipt when you pay the deposit or rent. Yes, thank you so much. That is the end of part one. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turns to part two. Part two. You are going to hear a talk given by Madeline. She is going to introduce the recreational facilities on campus and in town. First, you have some time to look at questions 11 to 20. As you listen to the talk, answer questions 11 to 20. Well, good morning, everybody. My name is Madeline Stewart, and I'm here to tell you about the recreational facilities available on campus, and also to tell you something about what the town has to offer. You may already know that your students' union membership also includes membership of the sports union, which provides a range of sporting and recreational facilities on campus much the same as those in most British universities. The sports union has football, tennis, and cricket teams in local competitions. And really, most sports are catered for in some way on campus, even if they're just social matches. In the building itself, there are fitness classes and a full gym, including weights. The sports union can also provide cheap tickets to some major sporting events. And to keep you up to date with everything available, there's a weekly newsletter distributed around the campus. You should check this to find out the names and phone numbers of the contact people for each sport or activity you're interested in. Er, yes, did you have a question? Yes, uh, apart from what you've just said, does the sports union offer individual help in any of its activities, uh, for example, in getting fit and healthy? Yes, we do. The sports union has a fitness assessment clinic every Friday staffed by the resident sports trainer, who can provide advice on the best program for you and refer you to various charts. I'm sure you all realize that for any medical assessment or health problem, you should go to the university medical service. The sports trainer can also advise you on a suitable training program using the weights. And now on to Ashbury. For a town of its size, Ashbury has some unusually good leisure and sporting facilities most of which are near the center of town and easily reached by bus from this campus. There's a new, well, almost new, Olympic-sized swimming pool. That's not quite in the central town area, but it's only a five-minute walk from the bus stop. Above the pool, there's a high-tech fitness center that any of you more serious fitness lovers would need to check out. Then, in the center of town, there's a sporting complex called the Anderson Center, which contains squash courts and facilities for a number of other indoor sports, such as basketball. 
and just around the corner from the Anderson Center, in the main street there, is an indoor bowling alley. All of these facilities are listed in the weekly newsletter, so I encourage you all to look through it and... That is the end of part two. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Section 3. You will hear two business studies students discussing a presentation they'll do on an article on working effectively in groups. First, you have some time to look at questions 21 to 26. Now listen and answer questions 21 to 26. So, Brad, what did you think of the article on group work? Oh, hi, Helen. Uh, yeah, it was pretty good, with helpful pieces of advice on how to make group work effective. I think we were lucky to be given such a straightforward text to present at the Management Skills Seminar. Yeah. Actually, shall we discuss it now? Have you got time? Sure. It's only a 10-minute presentation, so we just need to explain and then give our views on the main points raised in the article. I'll jot down some notes. Right. So, there are three main sections. I suggest we start with listening. Yeah, effective listening in groups, because it's not something that's frequently covered on courses in our field. No, and we should say that in the presentation. Yeah. And also, effective listening's pretty simple, you know. I don't think it's hard to learn. Well, people think it's easy, but in my experience, most of us tend to be very lazy listeners. OK, I wouldn't argue with that. <laughs> <laughs> Something I do think we should emphasize is the power of the listener's posture, gestures, etc., in making speakers feel respected. Not that you're just waiting for them to finish before jumping in with your own ideas. Uh huh. OK, right. Uh, the next section is on goal setting. Let's make sure we're clear what the article says on this. Yeah. Well, firstly, it says that all group members must be given time to explain their own goals. That's it, yeah. And then did it say that the whole group should agree on common goals? That's a bit too strong. It's more that everyone's agendas should be equally acceptable. But it does say that goals have to be realistic, you know... Achievable within a particular time? You've got it. That's really what the article's saying. There isn't really any point in having ideals if group members know they won't come to anything within a reasonable period. So, I think a summary covering those points will be enough for that part of the presentation, don't you? Yep. Yeah. Now, the last section is about conflict resolution. Actually, I thought it was the worst part of the article. Me too. I don't think it went into sufficient detail on the issue. Actually, I thought it devoted too much space to it, but that it was all rather boring, you know? It didn't mention some of the more radical theories. Absolutely. I found that really irritating. Right. And also, I think it could have said more about conflict sometimes being healthy in groups. Absolutely. It just mentioned rather glibly about how we should avoid thinking of winners and losers and that quick resolution of conflict is always desirable. Without explaining what these terms mean? Well, it gives quite detailed definitions, but doesn't develop a proper argument. Right. So for the presentation, I think we just give some definitions and... And then explain what we feel felt were the weaknesses in the article's treatment of conflict resolution. Yeah, good.
Now you have some time to look at questions 27 to 30. Now listen and answer questions 27 to 30. So, let's think about what we have to prepare for the actual presentation. Well, I suppose we'll use PowerPoint, but I'm hopeless at using it, especially if it has any visuals. I really have to look into doing a course on it because I know I'll need it in the future. <laughs> Don't worry, I'm quite happy using PowerPoint and I'll put it together when everything else is ready. That's a relief. But yes, do that later. OK. Now, I heard the tutor saying we have to include some well-chosen quotations from the article. I'm not sure if we do. I'll email him to find out. No need. I can just have a look at the specs he gave us when he set the task. That'll be quicker. But the tutor definitely said we have to prepare a handout to go with the talk. I'm not really sure how we do that. Sarah did one last year. Who's she? She's doing the same option as me on marketing. I'll ask her advice on what to include. Great. So that just leaves the bibliography at the end. I suppose it'll mainly be articles. Yeah. So we'll just look on the web, and we can leave that till later. But we've been advised against that. Well, we could have a look through some journals in the library. I think we should start by looking through module handbooks. I think that'll give us some good leads. Yeah, you're probably right. So that's all the topics. That is the end of section 3. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now it turns to part four. Part four. You'll hear a lecturer talking to students about sport in Ireland. First, you have some time to look at questions 31 to 33. Now listen carefully and answer questions 31 to 33. Now today we're going to be finding out about the most popular sports in the Emerald Isle. That's Ireland, of course. Can you guess what they are? Well, there are these two lesser played games, a form of rounders and Gaelic handball. But we'll start with one which is perhaps over 3,000 years old arriving in Ireland with the Celts, some claim. That may be a slight exaggeration, but I consider it to be the fastest field game in the world, and it goes by the name of hurling. Well, that's what it's known as in the English-speaking world anyway. So, what do you have to do? You've got 15 players on a team, one of them the goalkeeper. Each one has a stick called a hurley. Here you are. I've brought mine along. Had it since I was at school. This is what it looks like, and basically you have to get this ball, called a schlitter, that's S-L-I-O-T-A-R, so it's not spelt the way it's pronounced. You hit it into the net for three points, or you can hit it over the net for one point. The goal looks like the letter H, with the net under the crossbar. The goalie has a bigger stick than the others to help keep the ball out. You can also catch the schlitter and run with it for four steps maximum or bounce it on your stick. Is that clear to you all? I'll be showing you a video a bit later so you can see what a game actually looks like. You might like to think of it as a mixture of lacrosse, hockey and baseball. Oh, and it's played by women too but it goes by the name of Kamogi.
in that case. Before you hear the rest of the talk, you have some time to look at questions 34 to 40. Now listen and answer questions 34 to 40. I'll give you a bit of the history, shall I now? Generally, the golden age of the game is considered to be the 18th century. But systematic rules were first agreed and drawn up at that great shrine of learning, Trinity College Dublin, in 1879, founding the Irish Hurling Union closely followed just a few years later by the formation of the Gaelic Athletics Association. With greater organisation last century, the All-Ireland Hurling Championship got off to a flying start, and I'm proud to say that my own native city of Cork has won more than 20 titles over the years. But then, so have Kilkenny and Tipperary. Is it only played in Ireland? No. Well, it is the only country with a national team at the moment, but you may be surprised to discover there are hurling clubs in London, as well as in America and Argentina, to name just a few. The other game I'd like to take a little time to introduce you to is Gaelic football, which is played on the same pitch as hurling with the same number of players. But there's no net. You just have to get the ball over your opponent's goalposts. And you can do that by kicking or punching the ball. However, you're not supposed to do that to the players, I might add. Imagine it as a combination of soccer and basketball. But in my opinion, it's a more exciting spectacle than either of those. Excuse my bias, if you will. It's also very popular with women. In fact, there are more women's teams than for any other sport whether despite or because of the physical contact involved, I wouldn't like to say. They do play a shorter game, 60 minutes, rather than the men's 70. So, let's have a look. If we can have the lights down, I'll see if I can get this technology to work. That is the end of part four. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Hello everyone, welcome to Team IELTS stream. I'm RP and you are watching the IELTS listening test channel. And today I'm super excited to announce that on your demand we have started a series of writing task 1 and writing task 2. और आज आपकी खास डिमांड पे हम हिंदी में बनाने वाले हैं वीडियो बिकॉज़ बहुत सारे स्टूडेंट्स ने हमें डिमांड की कि सर प्लीज स्पीक हिंदी हिंदी में बनाइए सो टू सेटिस्फाई योर डिमांड वी आर रेडी टू स्पीक इन हिंदी टुडे सो आपका आज का ऐसे है स्टेटमेंट ऑफ टुडे जैसे प्रेजेंटली सम पीपल आर्ग्यू दैट लाइब्रेरीज आर नीडलेस प्रेजेंटली मीन नाउ डेज आजकल some people argue, कुछ लोग argue करते हैं, ये कहते हैं that libraries are needless, mean no need of libraries, mean library की जुरूरत नहीं है because students can get information online on internet, क्योंकि students को internet से information online मिल सकती है but others believe oppositely, लेकिन जो दूसरे लोग हैं, वो इसका opposite believe करते हैं, यानि वो कहते हैं कि library जुरूरी है Discuss both the views and give your opinion. Discuss both view and give your opinion. So this is your essay. I think you got it. Aapko samaj gaya. So without wasting your time, let's get started. Are you ready? Here we go. So ye hai mera introduction. Information has a starting but not an ending. In information lene ka jo tarika hai, wo starting hai, uska koi end nahi hai. 
Presently, an argument has been put forward that student can fetch information online. Presently, an argument has been put forward. In the argument, is baat pe argument hui hai. Students can fetch information. In the students information le sakte hain online. Online information le sakte hain. So libraries are redundant. इसलिए लाइब्रेरी जी जो लाइब्रेरीज हैं वो रिडेंडेंट हैं फालतू की चीज हैं वेस्टेज हैं वेस्ट ऑफ मनी वेस्टेज वेस्टेज हैं वो रिडेंडेंट है फालतू हैं एंड अदर परस्यूम दैट ऑपोजिट लेकिन जो दूसरे हैं वो उसका ऑपोजिट मानते हैं अर्थात वो सोचते हैं कि लाइब्रेरी की अभी भी जरूरत है दिस एसे इंटेंट टू एनालाइज बोथ द व्यूज फ्रॉम माय परसेप्शन दिस एसे इंटेंट टू एनालाइज सो ये लास्ट सेंटेंस लिखने का इंट्रोडक्शन का लास्ट सेंटेंस कैसे लिखें उसका एक तरीका है दिस ऐसे इंटेंस टू एनालाइज बोथ द व्यूज यानी ये ऐसे दोनों व्यूज को एनालाइज करेगा फ्रॉम माय परसेप्शन मेरे नजरिए से ऑल राइट सो दिस इज हाउ आई हैव रिटर्न मेन बॉडी पैराग्राफ वन बीपी वन इवन दो स्टूडेंट्स कैन एक्सेस इंफॉर्मेशन ऑनलाइन स्टिल लाइब्रेरीज आर पैरामाउंट इवन दो मतलब हालांकि इन हिंदी भी सही हालांकि स्टूडेंट्स कैन एक्सेस इंफॉर्मेशन ऑनलाइन स्टूडेंट्स को ऑनलाइन इंफॉर्मेशन मिल सकती है स्टिल लाइब्रेरीज आर पैरामाउंट पैरामाउंट इज वेरी नाइस वर्ड मीन वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट लाइब्रेरीज की लाइब्रेरीज बहुत इंपॉर्टेंट है तो बिगिन विद शुरू करने के लिए शुरू करने के लिए अंडर डेवेल्प रीजन फाइंड इट हार्ड टू अक्यूमुलेट रिसोर्सेज to get information online underdeveloped डिवेल्प्ड रीजन मीन ऐसे रीजन ऐसे क्षेत्र जो डिवेल्प्ड नहीं है उन उनके लिए बहुत मुश्किल है फाइंड इट हार्ड टू अक्यूमुलेट रिसोर्सेज टू अक्यूमुलेट मतलब टू अक्वायर इकट्ठा करना गेट टूगेदर इकट्ठा करना रिसोर्सेज को इकट्ठा करना ऑनलाइन इंफॉर्मेशन को ऑनलाइन लेने के लिए फॉर एग्जाम्पल इन नॉर्थ ईस्ट इंडिया ये एग्जाम्पल है नॉर्थ ईस्ट इंडिया में देर आर नो इंटरनेट टावर्स अवेलेबल क्योंकि इंटरनेट टावर अवेलेबल नहीं है ड्यू टू विच पीपल डिवेलिंग देयर इसलिए जो लोग वहाँ रह रहे हैं कांट यूज इंटरनेट टू गेट एनी काइंड ऑफ इंफॉर्मेशन वो इंफॉर्मेशन लेने के लिए इंटरनेट यूज नहीं कर सकते दे आर डिपेंडेंट ऑन लाइब्रेरीज वो लाइब्रेरीज पे डिपेंड हैं टू अक्वायर इंफॉर्मेशन इंफॉर्मेशन लेने के लिए तो देखिए अलग अलग तरह के मैंने वर्ब यूज की हुई हैं टू अक्वायर इंफॉर्मेशन टू अक्यूमुलेट इंफॉर्मेशन टू एक्सेस इंफॉर्मेशन और लाइब्रेरी आज रिटेंडेंट सो वेरी नाइस वर्ड टू यूज द ओनली सोर्स टू अक्वायर नॉलेज फॉर देम इज लाइब्रेरी उनके लिए जो सिर्फ जो सोर्स नॉलेज लेने का है वो लाइब्रेरी ही है इन एडिशन इसके अलावा इन एडिशन वेरी नाइस फ्रेज इन एडिशन मतलब मोर ओवर इसके अलावा अपार्ट फ्रॉम दिस यानी कनेक्ट करने के लिए कोहिजिव डिवाइसेस बोलते हैं हम इसको इंग्लिश में एक्सेसिंग इंफॉर्मेशन ऑनलाइन हैज कॉम्प्लिकेशन एक्सेसिंग इंफॉर्मेशन ऑनलाइन ऑनलाइन इंफॉर्मेशन लेने के लिए कॉम्प्लिकेशन उसमें कुछ कॉम्प्लिकेशन हैं कुछ डिफिकल्टीज आती हैं फर्दर एलबोरेटिंग इट यानी इसको एलबोरेट करने के लिए इसको एक्सप्लेन करने के लिए वाइल्ड सर्फिंग इंफॉर्मेशन ऑनलाइन ऑनलाइन को इंफॉर्मेशन को ऑनलाइन सर्व करने के लिए ऑनलाइन लेने के लिए नंबर ऑफ नोटिफिकेशन पॉप अप बहुत सारे नोटिफिकेशन आते रहते हैं विच डाइवर्ट वन माइंड जिससे देखने वाले का ध्यान डाइवर्ट होता है यानी भटकता है मोर ओवर इट हैज इफेक्ट्स ऑन आवर बॉडी इसके अलावा इसके हमारे बॉडी पर भी इफेक्ट पड़ते हैं गिवन दैट स्टेइंग फॉर आवर्स इन फ्रंट ऑफ ब्लू स्क्रीन डटेरियोरेट आई यानी काफ़ी देर तक घंटों तक ब्लू स्क्रीन के आगे बैठे रहने से आई साइट वीक होती है डिटेरियोरेट आई साइट मीन वीकन आई साइट आई साइट का वीक होना दस इस तरह इस प्रकार से या हैंस सम परसेंटेज ऑफ पॉपुलेस वी लैक इन गेटिंग इंफॉर्मेशन जो कुछ परसेंटेज है लोगों की वो इंफॉर्मेशन लेने से चूक जाएगी उनको उनको इंफॉर्मेशन का अभाव रहेगा लैक इन गेटिंग इंफॉर्मेशन उनको इंफॉर्मेशन नहीं मिलेगी This is how I have written main body paragraph टू ये है students today can access information virtually. यानी आज के students को information virtually मिल जाती है यानी computer से So libraries are needless. इसलिए library की कोई जरूरत नहीं है Starting with attaining information online is time efficient. Starting with start करने के लिए attaining information online is time efficient. 
जिन्हें काफ़ी समय की बचत होती है यदि हम इन्फॉर्मेशन को ऑनलाइन लें टू एक्सप्लेस इट इट अर्थात एक्सप्लेन इट द इन्फॉर्मेशन ऑनलाइन इज अप टू डेट एंड प्रिसाइज यानी इन्फॉर्मेशन जो हमें ऑनलाइन मिलती है वो अप टू डेट है और प्रेसाइज मतलब एग्जैक्ट है जो सही चाहिए हमें वही इन्फॉर्मेशन मिलेगी मोर ओवर इट इज रेलेवेंट टू द टॉपिक ये टेल टॉपिक से रेलेवेंट होगी वेयर एज इन लाइब्रेरी डजन ऑफ बुक्स हैव टू बी रेड टू फाइंड इन्फॉर्मेशन जबकि लाइब्रेरी में दर्जनों बुक्स पढ़नी पड़ती हैं इन्फॉर्मेशन को पाने के लिए ढूंढने के लिए बिसाइड्स दिस इसके अलावा इन्फॉर्मेशन अवेलेबल ऑन वेब विल मिटिगेट द यूसेज ऑफ इन्फॉर्मेशन बुक्स इन्फॉर्मेशन अवेलेबल ऑन वेब यानी वेबसाइट पर जो इन्फॉर्मेशन अवेलेबल होगी विल मिटिगेट द यूसेज ऑफ इन्फॉर्मेशनल बुक्स उससे इन्फॉर्मेशनल बुक्स का यूज करने में कमी आएगी विच विल अल्टीमेटली एलिविएट द चॉपिंग ऑफ ट्रीज टू पब्लिक स्टैम और उसका रिजल्ट ये होगा अल्टीमेटली मतलब एज ए रिजल्ट विल एलिविएट द चॉपिंग ऑफ ट्रीज टू पब्लिक स्टैम उनको पब्लिश करने के लिए उन बुक्स उन बुक्स को पब्लिश करने के लिए ट्रेज को काटने की जरूरत नहीं पड़ेगी गिवन दैट एक्सेसिंग इन्फॉर्मेशन ऑनलाइन इज इको फ्रेंडली टू यानी दूसरे वर्ड में इन अदर वर्ड वी कैन से एक्सेसिंग इन्फॉर्मेशन ऑनलाइन इज इको फ्रेंडली टू यानी इन्फॉर्मेशन यदि ऑनलाइन हम लेंगे तो वो इको फ्रेंडली है यानी एनवायरमेंट फ्रेंडली या इको फ्रेंडली है टू रिकेपिचुलेट टू रिकेपिचुलेट मीन इन कंक्लूजन ऑल दो एक्सेसिंग इन्फॉर्मेशन ऑन दैट ऑन नेट सॉरी ऑन नेट हैज फ्यू बेनिफिट्स इंक्लूडिंग प्रिजर्वेशन ऑफ एनवायरमेंट येट इरेडिकेटिंग द नीड ऑफ लाइब्रेरी एंड डिपेंडिंग ऑफ इंटरनेट इन्फॉर्मेशन वी लिव अ लॉट ऑफ पॉपुलेस अन एजुकेटेड ऑल दो हालांकि एक्सेसिंग इन्फॉर्मेशन ऑन नेट इन्फॉर्मेशन को नेट से लेना हैज फ्यू बेनिफिट्स उसके काफ़ी फायदे हैं कुछ फायदे हैं हैज ए फ्यू बेनिफिट्स ए फ्यू इंक्लूडिंग प्रिजर्वेशन ऑफ एनवायरमेंट जिसमें एनवायरमेंट का प्रिजर्वेशन करना प्रोटेक्शन ऑफ एनवायरमेंट येट इरेडिकेटिंग द नीड ऑफ लाइब्रेरी फिर भी यदि हम लाइब्रेरी की जरूरत को इरेडिकेट करेंगे खत्म करेंगे एंड डिपेंडिंग ऑन इंटरनेट और यदि हम इंफॉर्मेशन के लिए इंटरनेट पर डिपेंड करेंगे वी लिव अ लॉट ऑफ पॉपुलेस अन एजुकेटेड तो इसलिए बहुत उससे उसके कारण बहुत सारी जो पॉपुलेशन है वो हमारी अन एजुकेटेड रह जाएगी आई थिंक इट्स ईजी नाउ आपके लिए बहुत ईजी हो गया ये हिंदी में आपको कैसा लगा प्लीज कॉमेंट सो दिस इज द एंड ऑफ द वीडियो बट डोंट फॉरगेट टू सब्सक्राइब आवर चैनल कॉमेंट लाइक एंड प्लीज प्रेस द बेल आईकॉन सो दैट यू कैन गेट नोटिफिकेशन ऑफ एवरी न्यू वीडियो बाय फॉर नाउ सी यू इन माई नेक्स्ट वीडियो बाय